Okay, so hello again my friends and welcome to part two of the uh, trail cams uh, series that I'm doing. And um, I just collected the, um, the trail cam that I placed last on the previous video uh, by the water. And the good news is, is that it recorded a lot of activity, uh, mostly jackal. Um, no foxes this time. did come through as well and um, most interestingly of all the wild boar as well uh, on two um, I've got two recordings of the wild boar uh, coming and going so um, really happy with that and uh, it means that it's a worthwhile location for me to return to uh, with the DSLR camera trap uh, to set that up and um, get some really decent images of, um, of all of those, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, of course, I don't quite know how those animals will react to uh, the flash of the DSLR, but anyway, uh, I think it's worth a go. Anyway, I'm off to the other locations to collect the other two trail cams, and uh, I'll see you there. I'm just walking across the... Uh, the field to the uh, little dry river, the dry stream, uh, to recover my second trail cam. So, good news is the camera is still there. records too much of me. Okay, let's take it back to the car and see if there's anything on it. So no discernible movement on the first couple of clips. I don't know what triggered it in those instances. A little field mouse or something, it's tiny. So now I'll have to look on the computer later. I think it's a little mouse of some kind that triggered it. Running along the um, fallen branches there. Something's been triggering it. It could just be the temperature differences that's triggering it. I can't actually see anything moving in the frame other than that one shot with the little mouse oh dear okay nothing I can discern on that at all uh, but I'll have another I'll have a better look on the um, on the laptop and see Good news is the batteries have lasted quite well, which I was worried about because they're rechargeable and they don't seem to be, they, until now they haven't seemed to be standing up to it too well. Okay, so off to the last spot, which was where I had spotted the um, little fox, so I shall see you there. Okay, so I'm at the... Um, first spot that I set up the um, camera for the fox, which is also the, um, the sponsored camera, the little um, 8-man H60 camera, and I'm curious to see how well it's performed. Hopefully it will have recorded something. Oh, it's been a certainly been a lot of digging around here. Which wasn't there the other day. So, 
So I'm really rather hopeful that this camera will have picked up something. Let's get back to the car and see if it's picked up anything. So let's have a quick look and see if this little H60 worked and how well. Okay, replay. And we have 36 recordings. Okay, the first one is me putting it in place. Second one, and we have... Let's, okay, okay. Nothing again on the next one. Again, I can hear something moving around. Oh, something came right up to the camera. I think it's a little fox. The, I think it's the little fox having a sniff around on the camera. It's the next one, sure. Something moving around. Okay, again, an unclear picture like the previous one. Something moving around in the background, but I can't make it out on this tiny screen. Must be the little fox. I think it's been set off by little birds, because there's quite a few little birds in that clump of um, bushes there. I think that's what the daytime shots are mostly, the birds. Is it a wildcat? No, it's a fox. It's got to be a fox. Munching on something. Yes, fox. Wonderful. Well, at least we know he's there. Okay, I'll carry on looking through these. I'm still only halfway through, just over. Um, I think what I'll probably do is go grab my uh, DSLR camera trapping kit and go down to the um, to the location by the water and see if I can set it up in some way there that might record uh, the jackals and uh, if we're lucky again the uh, wild boar might come through and the badger as well. Okay, another one with little fox came in. Okay, so I shall see you there, and um, we'll set up the um, DSLR camera trap. See you down there. Okay, so in the last segment, I said I was uh, on my way down to uh, set the DSLR camera trap by the water. Uh, in the event, uh, I checked on the weather before setting off from the hotel and uh, it was forecast for rain that night but the following day which is today was forecasting snowfall during the night and the temperatures down to minus two so I thought I would um, save the camera the rain and put it out in the snowfall and uh, see if uh, the gods are uh, being favorable to me we might get some uh, potentially stunning shots with uh, snowfall and animals um, and then the, the uh, forecast generally for the next few days is uh, going to be really cold We've got today is Friday with temperatures down to minus two and minus three and snowfall overnight then tomorrow night temperatures down to minus six or seven with more snowfall on Sunday night it's giving temperatures down to minus 15 minus 16 and uh, if that happens then I'm pretty sure the batteries will give up um, which means on Sunday afternoon before that cold snap really cold snap I should say I might come and check on the cameras and uh, bring a set of uh, fresh batteries and uh, 
see what it might capture during that uh, really cold night. So anyway, I'm on my way down there now and I shall catch up with you there so we can set up the uh, camera trap. Okay, see you down there. Okay, so I'm down by the water and um, the situation down here has changed slightly because of the heavy rain that we had last night. That means that the whole thing is flooded here. So the pond has overflowed, uh, the, the um, canal has overflowed uh, onto the side here, which makes it slightly harder for me to set up the DSLR, um, the camera trap, because the place that I was thinking of putting it is also now uh, quite far into the water. And not only that, but it seems that this area here has been pushed through the branches. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe the um, the wild boar pushed his way through here. Uh, and that's where I had intended on putting the, um, the DSLR. So I'm not too keen to put it right in the, uh, the boar's path because I don't want him to take it out completely. So I shall um, have a wander around and uh, a rethink on how I'm going to position everything. So I'm going to uh, switch to the other camera, um, which has got wide view of me working the area. So uh, I shall catch up with you in a little bit. Okay, so I've just finished um, setting up the uh, camera and it's been a bit of a challenge in all honesty trying to, to um, set it up because there is absolutely no, uh, no fixed place here on this uh, little um, canal edge that I can um, position it. So I've had to use a tripod uh, which I've made as, uh, on a wide stance to try and be as steady as possible 
and in addition I also had been struggled to find any mounting points for the flash and the trigger as well, the um, cam traptions trigger. So if you, I don't know if you can see in there, that's the camera here, uh, and the um, one of the flash units is on one of the legs down here, and uh, the trigger is on the other side, uh, also mounted with a um, magic arm clamp to one of the legs. On this side, surveying the scene, I have uh, hidden in the reeds there. I've placed uh, a little trail cam, uh, and then on the other side, where I had placed the or originally the trail cam, um, I'll just walk around through the water, is, is the other flash unit lighting from this side, and also another trail cam as well, recording this angle. So we've got two angles on the trail cam, two angles on the flash. The camera's pointed straight uh, at the little platform. It's not looking down the log. And that's because I, from what I observed the other night, um, only the fox and one of the jackals used the log to actually cross. The rest of them just dived straight into the water. So I've come round to the right of that um, so that uh, hopefully they'll be coming straight into camera. Let me just reposition this over here. Okay, so the other thing I've done as well with the third trail camera that I have so that I get a complete coverage of the scene is I've placed it at the top of this meadow um, over here hidden in the brush, uh, so that it can survey the whole of this scene below. Because one of the things um, that I don't know is I've surveyed the actual crossing point over the water, but once they cross over to this side, I don't know what they do. So I wanted to have an eye on that aspect of it and to see what they're doing, where they go, are they just foraging this area, do they go further down, are they going up and over the embankment to the lake to maybe snag a bird, I don't know any of these, um, the answers to any of these questions. So I thought it might be a good idea to set up the trail, one of the trail cams at least, to survey the whole scene. And it's also a bit of a spy for me in terms of anybody coming along and uh, messing around with my, uh, my kit. So, yeah, that's all set up. Um, just to finish off, uh, I wanted to say a couple of words about the little trail cam that I was sponsored for, the little 8-man H60. Um, it's really performed well over the last few nights. Uh, I've got, had no issues with it. It triggers beautifully. Um, the picture quality is fine, absolutely, uh, for, especially for the price point. So I'm really happy to recommend it, and if you would uh, be interested in buying that, then you can click on the link below, um, which is an affiliated link, so I will get uh, a couple of pence off each of those sales. But if you are interested in a, a, a budget-end trail cam that performs well, that's definitely one to consider. Okay, so hopefully I'll be bringing you this video um, soon, and then one more with the results of all of this setup and uh, believe me I can hardly wait uh, like I said we're going to have some extreme weather tonight and the next couple of nights so it should be interesting to see what it records fingers crossed the batteries hold out anyways thank you so much for watching uh, thank you so much for subscribing and liking and doing all of that YouTube stuff and uh, hopefully I shall see you again very soon thanks for watching bye for now